Alba CVM1. That's the unusual set with the slider controls, which uses the Hong Kong made CB240 chassis. Which is this one, that's using the Eurosonic Euro 1, the Eurosonic Euro 2, and also turn the volume down as used in the Harvard 400M and we've covered two of those before now this set is a radio I bought on eBay for this demonstration because I hadn't uh, got one otherwise to show you and it seems to me that every time I buy a radio off eBay it's got a broken lamp in the meter anyway I've changed that the radio also came in with no transmit and the reason for there being no transmit was because the output transistor, which is an MPSU31 from Motorola, had failed. They're very hard to come by. I do have some in stock, but they're 12 quid a time, so they're not cheap. Now, I was still greeted with no transmit after replacing the output transistor, but it was clearly transmitting. And so I plumped for the relay. These radios have a, a relay in them, which is always going to be an unreliable point in any two-way radio. And I managed to find a firm selling these in the United States, and so I ordered some. But again, they weren't cheap to come by, and they ended up about £12. And it still didn't transmit. In actual fact, one of these coils had actually been cut with cutters. So that's what had caused the original falls of there being no transmit because of a high SWR, somebody transmitted with a broken coil. And I went for the relay. Well, we destroyed the old relay, taking it out. And it may have well been at the end of its life anyway. So it's got a new relay. It's got a new output transistor. So there we go. So I've done the fault finding. And it is now basically working. So we're now got with the tune-up procedure. I do have the full service manual in front of me here. And I'm not going to go through the VCO. Because I've covered this before on this model. And you're unlikely to find a problem with it. It uses the Sanyo LC7137 um, test point one um, it's a just T7 for 2.8 volts at channel 20. So there we go. Uh, adjust the tr trimmer VC2 for the frequency. Now, I don't normally do this first but in this case we will do and the frequency trimmer is that one down there under the wiring. I'll just see if I can zoom in on that. You'll just see one of those types of trimmers, which are quite a good quality. So we'll just see what it's doing on transmit. It's 2779122. Two. So if I just trim that up to the 125, which it should be, nobody can argue. So this, this is neither here nor there, you know, it doesn't make any difference as minute as this. I've got to made it worse now. There we have it, 125. Oh, it's got the built-in Roger Bleep, I just heard that. It's switchable on some models, but not on the Alba. So, that's covered that. The transmit lineup. The first transmit one. The first transmit adjustment is T T two, I think it says. It's a bad photocopy. It could be T seven, which is just there. So I'm, it's actually already doing four watts this radio. So I'll still go through it uh, just for this demonstration. The second transmit one. According to this manual, I, su I find this surprising. I would have thought they would receive, but the, uh, the the notes on this manual say these are. sure whether to believe that 
and the VC variable capacitor variable capacitor one there obviously is on the transmitter side. It's now doing four point two watts and the next one is T one I presume. That may not be. I'd ignore that. A, a T1 could be a um, interference uh, filter. Right. So we've now got we've got four watts on this, and so we now need to set the power meter and the transmit meter adjustment is VR1 there. So if I key up and see what it says, oh, it's going. It should be in the middle of the red patch, and it's nowhere near. So we'll just adjust that. That's all right. It's a little bit dirty that control. I'll just go through all these because you never know whether radios are just second hand like this have been in a smoking environment or not, and it does play havoc. Uh, with these skeleton presets. Just make sure that still works, it does. Next, we'll see if the low power is adjustable on this radio. The switch is at the back for the low power attenuator there. So I've just switched it to low power and it's actually doing uh, two and a half watts, so that's clearly not how it should be. The low power adjustment looks to be this one here, which is VR6, I think, could be. Th the, I'm, I'm not going to tell you these numbers because it's such a bad photocopy. It's hard to, um, hard to say. There we go. That's now set for 400 milliwatts as it should be. So that's fantastic. So we've done the transmit lineup. We've done the frequency. We now need to just do the deviation. See if it's got some audio on it. I'll get the little oscillator out that we use. I'm getting two and a half, which is how it should be. And I'll just do a whistle test to make sure that's correct. It's actually just slightly over the top, so we'll just adjust it. It is VR2, and VR2 should be the one just there. So we'll just see. It is indeed, because that was at full. So that concludes the transmit side of the Albert CBM1, and you join me on the receive side of it, no doubt.